Okay, the goal here is to present Autodesk Navisworks 2012 and it, it assumes that the audience is just anybody generally interested in seeing what the technology does and specifically what's the value proposition. What is it that they get from Navisworks that they don't get from other products? What are its best features? And so if I continue with this, that you, uh, I'm going to present uh, what to this Navisworks 2012. Um, by way of an overview, the design process is uh, made up of many associated tasks. There's usually an assumption that you're going to begin with conceptual modeling and, and maybe analysis at a very early stage. Take that model and go through the process of design development. Um, visualizing all the time as you're working because you're communicating with a client or with uh, with other people in the design team and uh, then you're going to take it to cost estimating um, construction documentation looking always to quality control to make sure that your virtual model uh, is uh, working where you want and even doing things like construction sequencing what's the order in which the building will be will be built. Well, the, the three items shown in green are the components that are, are featured in this presentation under Navisworks. Um, and it's also fair to say that none of these are linear anymore. These happen uh, not uh, sequentially, but, uh, but simultaneously. So even as you're talking about making conceptual modeling, you're still able to do visualization. You still might be thinking about uh, cost estimating even at a very early stage. It's uh, it's not the world it used to be. A lot of this happens simultaneously and not in a linear sequence. The graphic on the right shows that the center of all of this, the core of this, is the, the BIM model. But BIM extends beyond simply drafting a model, a virtual model in Revit architecture, it includes all of the other products that work with the data or the information that's part of a building information model to do other tasks, to complete other tasks. So five key reasons for using Navisworks and where it best fits as a specialized tool. Uh, the fact that Navisworks lets you create an interactive design review, so you can literally walk through the, a, a building uh, and present to other people uh, what you hope to have in reality. You can do a walkthrough of a virtual building and look for any errors or omissions uh, at a very, very early stage. Uh, and you can, you can come and go as you want. You have an avatar figure that you direct through the project. Um, that project is not limited to stuff that comes from or content that comes from Revit architecture, it could be from uh, other vendors like uh, MicroStation or it could be from other, uh, other, other products, Autodesk, 2D products and 3D products. Uh, there's a lot of formats that are provided to let you bring data into your Navisworks uh, model. Coordination is that uh, you can Using the example of Revit, you could have Revit structure, Revit architecture, Revit MEP, but you can bring information together from different disciplines so that you can see it all in what would be the, the final context. Some presentations that I've seen recently in Navisworks user groups su suggest that maybe uh, the optimum way to work is that each person has the authoring software, in this case, say Revit architecture, and the coordination software Navisworks on the same machine, maybe on two different screens, and they actually come and go between the two of them, creating and fixing content and the authoring software, Revit, and then looking at it in context of the virtual building inside Navisworks. Collaboration is a, a big deal, and there's ways that you can uh, let other people who don't even have the software use the free viewer. Navisworks Freedom, you can distribute and uh, then you can uh, let anybody look at your Navisworks uh, files um, to see 
save views, um, saved animation sequences, clash reports, all of those things without them actually having the, the software. Fourth reason for using it there is the saving in project time and costs. I principally want to mention the class de clash detector. Um, remember that you know Revit has uh, the ability to, to do clash detection but only for Revit models. So the clash detective in Navisworks includes objects coming from other vendors, other, other software. Timeliner lets you actually put them in a sequence and again you can use third party products or, or things like Project or, uh, or you can build a timeline and then watch the building uh, assembled according to your timeline. The last reason realistic visualization is that uh, you have presenter as an option within your Navisworks. You can you can make you can record movies uh, by simply clicking a record button and recording what you're doing on the screen. You can also record movies by saving viewports like keyframes and then playing them back in whatever sequence you arrange them in. Uh, and you can also assign materials, finished materials, bitmap materials to objects using a feature of Navisworks which is called search sets. Um, and, I'll, and I'll go into these in a bit more detail as we actually look at the product. So our first reason there was the easy interactive design review. You can have your avatar figure in a particular uh, building looking at all of the data from different disciplines brought together in, in your Navisworks model so you can check things out. You can, you can coordinate, so the example on the right shows that you've got the structural, you've got the architectural, you've got the MEP. As you're working on them, they can be updating automatically in Navisworks. It's not that you have to wait for them to be finished and then put them all together. You can start with uh, uh, simply coordinating the the files, the NWC files from the different disciplines and then as the work has been completed it can automatically be updated inside Navisworks. So you get a, a single whole project view that shows all the disciplines. Uh, the project collaboration would be that you can use the free viewer um, and also that really that the fact that it supports all these different f formats uh, means that you can be working with people that uh, Maybe they don't have Revit, but they're doing all their work in AutoCAD, or they're doing it in MicroStation, or they're doing it in, uh, they have SAT files, whatever format you need to get into this, uh, DWIF files, the, you, you can get that data and bring it into your model. Saving time on the projection cost is it, it'll actually go out and you can do the clash detective and find uh, and isolate in viewports that are created for you where there's an actual conflict and then what you would do is you can you can open up your authoring software fix the conflict produce the NWC file if needed and it updates in Navisworks. There's also a feature called switchback that lets you uh, select an area of conflict and switch back to the authoring tool to make the corrections and then switch back to the Navisworks to see the, the corrected uh, content. Uh, this, ex this here is an example of the construction sequence. So in literally you know, less than five minutes, if you've got the data organized according to certain standards, you can go out and create a timeline and from that timeline an animation that shows the sequence of construction. So what you're seeing is the pieces of the building coming together in the, in the sequence outlined in, uh, in, this, in this case it was done in Project but it could have been done in Primavera or other, other software packages or it could have been manually done in Navisworks. So I think this will run up to maybe like week 32 but you see the, the building as it's actually being constructed. Uh, this is not just a graph, this is not just a movie for presentation. You'll actually be able to compare the projected uh, time scale 
with the actual so you can be monitoring the construction as it's happening um, or you can be using it as a tool to see if you can't move activities around to save time um, because you get kind of a big picture in a, in a Gantt chart that lets you uh, see where maybe something could be moved up in the time frame uh, because, it, because it doesn't have dependencies on other activities. Last part of this, the realistic project visualization. Um, you get really good rendering from inside Navisworks and you can choose to do it as uh, in, in the form of the, the presenter materials where you have uh, uh, different backgrounds and you can assign different materials. The key here would be that you actually use search sets uh, that are created to group objects together in a logical way, maybe all your exterior brickwork or all your exterior, uh, all, all your uh, foundations. We use those same search sets to assign materials. So if your standards are consistent between projects, this will let you very quickly assign finished materials to them. And, and you get good good rendering quality from the, the, uh, the model itself. So that, that's what I want to try and present. I'm going to try and do it like this, where I, I, I start by showing you how you can open a Revit model and you can create an NWC file, how easy that is. Then interact with the design by navigating around inside it. I'll show you the steering wheel and I'll show you the navigation toolbar. I'll show you about coordination, where I'll actually bring in three different files from uh, structural, uh, structural MEP and architecture, um, a, a much bigger project than the when I'm beginning with. And then I'll look in the collaboration phase, I'll look at how we can have standards for creating and reuse of search sets to manage uh, combinations of uh, groups of objects that are in the project. And uh, I'm going to add the, the profiler uh, for the uh, managing appearance. For example, if I wanted to say highlight my cold water supply pipes in blue and my red, hot water supply in red. There's, there's a very easy, quick way to do this that was that was added in, uh, in 2012. The same time and cost, I'll create a construction sequence and I'll do a clash detection. And then under visualize, I'll actually create some animations and create some rendering. And I'll try and do all of this within, within uh, maybe 45 minutes. Um, the movies, when they're finished, will be posted at uh, my website, and I think we're also going to start posting them on the, on a, a, a Facebook channel that's only for our uh, student experts and, and people in the student expert program. But uh, that's where I'm going to post them when I'm done. And uh, thanks for listening, and I'll now get on with the actual presentation.